Hey, what's going on guys and welcome back. It's Andy the Mad Tatter again back with part two of my April sales roundup video. If you didn't see part one uh, or even the sort of uh, prologue, if you like, to this April sales roundup, uh, there's links in the description down below. Uh, that's for a video which shows my first 10 days in April and then part one of the video that you're about to watch now. So without further ado, I'll get into the next run of items. 18th of April, a leather J by Jasper Conran handbag. Uh, leather handbags do great. Uh, uh, Man-made material handbags do equally well if they're from the right brand. Uh, Jasper Conran, well-known name, although I'll be a little bit more high street these days than the couture that he was kind of famous for years ago. Uh, but this was a really nice little bag. Uh, sold for £23.94, paid £3.49 for it. And after shipping and fees, made 763 on that one. Again, for full disclosure, if you didn't see the other video, um, my profit figures are lower than they should be uh, because I paid back a PayPal working capital loan uh, through my PayPal fees. That is now, as of today, the 5th of April, uh, 5th of May even, uh, that is now paid off. So when you see future sales roundup videos, you won't be seeing those fees in there either. So that's the first item. Next. Uh, again, one of my favourite items, typewriters, love them, whether they're electric, whether they're mechanical, um, I just enjoy dealing with them and selling them, uh, they're quite simple to, uh, to test and get working and clean, they don't have a lot of different parts and considerations you've got to go with, if there's an issue with it, anybody with a basic grasp of, of how to fix something can sort out a mechanical typewriter or an electric typewriter for the most part. Uh, this one's a Smith Corona, a uh, great famous uh, brand of typewriters in general, the world over there, an American brand. Um, this one I actually spent around about 45 minutes on the phone back and forth to the buyer. Uh, being a business seller in the UK on eBay, you have to have your contact details available on your listings. Um, so that's a name, address and a contact telephone number. Um, it's just all to do with consumer protection regulation in the UK. Uh, it's the same deal if you go into a high street shop, if you look behind the counter or look at your receipt from buying something in the shop, you'll often see that the, the company's customer services and head offices addresses are there. Because we're a bus registered business seller on eBay, um, we have to abide by those regulations as well, as do all business sellers on eBay in the UK. It's not the same across the world, but certainly in the UK it is. So this customer actually gave me a call. Um, he's an old chap as well, uh, about 85 years old, a really, really interesting guy. He was telling me about how he broadcasts on local radio twice a week and he's written two books and this, that and the other. And he was, he was just a really nice guy. Um, and through around about 45 minutes of conversations between him and a couple of his family members, um, they I talked them through a few of the different typewriters that I had and this, that and the other. And they opted to buy this one in the end. Um, so it was a, it was certainly worth spending the time on the phone. Um, don't ever be averse to talking to your customers. Quite a lot of people will enjoy a more personal connection with you than just kind of typing on a, on a message or something like that. So never be averse to talking to your customers face to face or over the phone. Uh, but this one cost me seven pounds. Uh, total sale price was 85.94. Uh, used courier service for that one. Um, so it was 15.95 for the courier. Uh, so total profit after shipping and fees there is 37.26. Next, we've got a Tommy Hilfiger polo shirt. Again, a bit of a higher price for uh, a polo shirt. Uh, if you saw the previous one there, the Ted Baker one, it's a similar sort of thing. I don't tend to like paying that sort of money for them, but if they're nice quality, sometimes it can be, be worth it, if only to just sort of add to your stock and, and, and add to your offering. Uh, so this one was six ninety nine, sold for nineteen ninety four, and made two ninety five after shipping and fees there. Uh, another board game, I did say in the previous part of this video that I don't do a lot of board games, and it's true, I don't do an awful lot of board games, but the, the few that I have got, I seem to have sold a few of them this month. So uh, this was Stratego, Lord of the Rings Trilogy Edition, and literally the only thing that made it a Lord of the Rings Trilogy Edition was the stickers that went on the little castles. Uh, if you're familiar with Stratego, it kind of has these little plastic castle uh, player tokens. Uh and this one just had Lord of the Rings character stickers on it. So, yeah, apparently that makes it Lord of the Rings. Um, bought for a pound, sold for twenty four ninety nine, twenty eight ninety four 24 uh, with postage. And after shipping and fees, made fourteen oh eight on that one. And the buyer gave us positive feedback, so happy days. 
again that goes into that whole category of I bought it because it was Lord of the Rings. Uh, I don't really know about Stratego. I don't play Stratego. I've never played Stratego. I, I've heard of it mentioned. I've never even seen people play it. But the Lord of the Rings connection was enough for me to sort of go, yeah, all right, let's have a go. Uh, next, men's Levi short sleeve shirt. Levi's another great brand to to buy and to sell uh, for resellers in general. Um, you, as long as you're picking up genuine stuff, there are. There are quite a lot of fake Levi jeans out there, for instance, even to this day. Uh, not quite to the extent that I think it was in the sort of 80s and 90s, but you do certainly still see them out there. So um, there's plenty of places online you can look. Uh, if you just Google how to spot fake Levi's, you'll be able to get a pretty concise um, account of how to check that they're genuine. Uh, this one, of course, was a genuine item because it was, as you can probably see on the picture there, it is tagged. Uh, it was a brand new and tagged shirt. Um, one of my local charity shops had a couple of them in. I paid a fiver each for them. This one sold for $29.99 with free postage and I made ten forty two after shipping and fees there. Uh, big old size as well, I think it was. So this next item is actually one that I'm selling for my dad. He's dug out a load of his old vinyl for me uh, and said, can I sell it for him? And he'll give me some of the money. To be quite honest with you, I'm not going to take any money off him. I'm just going to give him all of everything uh, that they make. Because uh, after all, it's my dad. So uh, Pink Floyd Animals 1977 vinyl LP, gatefold sleeve, uh, with the lyric insert and everything. It was a nice complete one and it had been stored in a plastic record protector as well. So the, the sleeve was in really great condition. And the disc was in pretty good condition as well, but I don't know... Uh, how to grade vinyl according to the criteria that they use with things like the Record Collectors Association or the Vinyl Collectors Association. They have very specific criteria that things have to meet to be mint or near mint or uh, good or, or whatever condition that they describe. So I, I said in my listings, I was very upfront uh, in my descriptions for the items. I said, look, I'm not a record collector or dealer. Uh, I'm just selling some records that were in the house. I can't give you a grading but I will accurately and honestly describe the item and welcome any questions, queries, or uh, requests for, you know, different photographs from different angles, things like that. Uh, so I didn't have a problem, got no questions or anything from this guy. I was really, I went into obsessive detail about every little bit of wear. So like, although it's been in this this plastic sleeve, the plastic sleeve itself had split a little bit on one corner, so it had kind of slightly just worn the, the edge of the the edge there um so i mentioned that uh i mentioned that there were some small scratches on the disc but i'd had played it um i, I tested it out on a sony uh, turntable that i've got and it worked fine so i'd said there are scratches there but it doesn't affect playback um that there was no fade into the actual label on the record or anything like that or no peel into the label on the record i went into detail about the condition of the cardboard insert that the record itself goes in i took loads of pictures um so i just was tried i just tried to be as honest and concise as possible in the description of it uh bearing in mind that i can't grade them and yeah seemed to have no issues there uh packaging wise that was something that i was terrified doing because i know how fragile these things can be and how heavy-handed the postal service can be so um what i actually did i took a piece of hardboard out of an old set of drawers uh when you get sort of a cheap drawer unit and it's got that car that that hard fiber board stuff in the bottom of the drawers it was a piece of that i cut it cut it to the size of the record and put the record on top of that and wrapped it over with the that sort of foam packaging material, that stuff that's like a big foamy sheet. I wrapped that up around it, then I made a donut of bubble wrap all the way around the edge of it, and then put about nine foot of bubble wrap around the whole thing. Uh, over that, I think I wrapped it in brown paper, and then I think it either went in a big poly mailer or a bin bag, um, and, and that all got taped over it as well just to, to make sure it wasn't going to get wet or anything like that I went really obsessive on the packaging much like I did with the chess set if you saw the first part of the video um, Bio left positive feedback and again specifically mentioned how, how well packaged the item was so I've got a few more of these old drawers and I've got a few more old records to sell so I'll probably just end up busting them all up for the hardboard uh, just to brace these records out with them make sure they don't you know they make sure they don't get damaged or anything in transit uh, so it was an owned item that one no cost against it sold for twenty five ninety four made seventeen ninety seven although as I say that's going to my old man and uh, got positive feedback from the buyer.
Next item, uh, one of mine, this one, uh, one of my own shirts, uh, Fred Perry short sleeved check shirt. Uh, I said in previous videos about check shirts, they they sell very well because they're always they're always in demand. They're always generally uh, in fashion somewhere along the way, and short sleeved ones in the summer are always going to go well. Fred Perry, really nice quality brand, um, typically British brand, uh, very famous the world over, and um, great quality stuff. Again, heavily faked though. There's, there's a lot of fake Fred Perry polo shirts out there in particular. Uh, but as I say, this one was one of my own, so I knew it was, uh, you know, I knew it was the real deal. Um, sold it for $37.94, uh, made $21.46 after shipping and fees, and the buyer left positive feedback. Interestingly enough as well, it folded down small enough to go for a large letter, that one, even though it's a big shirt, because I'm a big chap. Next. Uh, Sony iLink cable for Handycam. Uh, this was a brand new and sealed item. Uh, I picked up at one of the charity shops, paid a pound for it, sold it for eighteen ninety four. After shipping and fees, made seven sixty six. Used the stock image there uh, for the main picture. But as I've said in previous videos about things with stock images, I was going to start including the pictures of the actual item as well, and that's what I've done. Uh, so you've got the the stock image there just for the best possible kind of attention grabber and then in the description people can go and have a look at the actual item they're going to receive but it was a brand new and sealed thing anyway it's just that was a nice higher resolution photo uh so made 766 after shipping and fees on that one um sold quite quickly as well uh, about a week or so i think it was on for so i did all right with that one uh pc game Stronghold collection, it's sort of a, a collection of real-time strategy, medieval, defend your castle, attack other people's castles type of games. Bought it in a huge bundle of games. Uh, I paid three quid for, if you're familiar with the big blue Ikea bags, the kind of big famous nylon-y, plastic -y Ikea bags, I basically bought a whole one of those at a car boot sale and it was full of PS2 games, Xbox 360 games and a couple of PC games. The whole bag full I paid three quid for. Uh, so this was this was in that bag. Uh, paid 10, so it worked out at 10p effectively uh, that this item owes me. Uh, sold it for 13.94, made 7.15 after shipping and fees on it. Um, it was literally just a disc in a box, guys. It had no manual. Uh, I don't think it did have a manual. No, no manual or anything like that with it. Um, it just was what it was, uh, so I just took one photo of it, to be quite honest. There's the box, there's the disc, and that's what it is, and yeah, it sold. No problem at all. Sold quickly as well. Again, that wasn't up for more than a week, and uh, away it went, so happy days. Another DVD, sort of starting to wind down on the DVDs now. Um, I'm not really doing as many of them as I ever as I did to begin with. DVDs, when I was first starting out as a reseller, they were really good for kind of keeping you ticking over because you could pretty much rely on selling a couple of DVDs every week and that just keep bringing some sales in and keep your morale up as much as anything as well. But as time's gone on, I'm finding that there's so little profit in them and they actually, when you've got a lot of them, can take up quite a lot of space. Um, I'm finding that there's so little profit in them that it's not as worth my time. I'll certainly still sell the occasional box set and stuff like that because they they do a lot better than single DVDs. But nevertheless, take that for the record. Uh, the official documentary paid 75p for this one, uh, sold it for 5.99 and made 101. Free postage. Uh, this is actually one that I missed. I've started charging postage on all my DVDs. And uh, this is one that I missed the postage on, so I would have probably got a little bit more back on that had I had the buyer paid postage, but never they mind. Next, um, Meccano flight set. Uh, this was a brand new sealed item again. Another retail arbitrage buy from TK Maxx. Again, just to cover retail arbitrage, if you've not done it before or you're not familiar with the terminology retail arbitrage, you're just buying stuff from retail shops to resell. Uh, for a profit, so you're going out buying new items in sales, clearances, things like that, and you're reselling it for a profit from there, so that's retail arbitrage, or RA. Um, paid a tenner for this one, sold it for twenty six ninety nine. dollars uh, gave free postage, and it's gone on the global shipping program to a buyer in Portugal. Um, I did start a sale, as well as taking offers on certain things as well, so I think it's got, yeah, 10% off, you can't probably can't make it out on the camera there, but it was 10% 10, 10 off was the sale, uh, so that was up at 29.99, um, but I got it for 26.99 with free postage, and uh, yeah, happy days, made £3.20 on it, but it 
it's got it moving. It got it out of the way. I've said before, I'm not the best at retail arbitrage, and this was certainly one of the earlier um, items I bought on that. So to have made any money on it at all actually is is not bad. And again, I'd have made more still were it not for the um, PayPal working capital. Next, uh, Tommy Hilfiger golf polo shirt, another one um, from in the house, really. Uh, so it didn't have any cost against it. Cost sold for seventeen ninety four. dollars made eight sixty four after shipping and fees on that one. Tommy Hilfiger, great brand, uh, as long as you know you're looking at genuine stuff. And again, like with the Levi's, uh, go on to Google, Google how to spot fake Tommy Hilfiger, and you'll see loads of great tips on, uh, on, on that too. So another good brand to sell that you can often pick up quite cheap and, and make a reasonable profit on. Uh, this one you might remember from, I think this was my very first haul video actually is what this was in. This is the Lord of the Rings Pewter and Bronze Effect chess set. Uh, had this one up at 39 99 so this was one that went in the sale as well. I think I did toys and games in a sale, so hence the Meccano, and this was sold at a sale price. Was up at 39 99 sold for 35 99 um, with 3 95 postage, so a total of 39 94 Made 12 23 on that one, and it's gone on the GSP, Global Shipping Program, to uh, a buyer in Austria. So, um, yeah, I, I did, interesting aside, um, I did see someone say, when, when I posted this video or when I made mention of this video uh, on a Facebook group, somebody did say that I think they'd sold this for about 20 quid, this chess set. And to be honest with you, I, if somebody tells me something like that, I'm always going to see it as a challenge to sell it for more. So the fact that I had it up at 40 quid <laughs> and stole it for th 36, I was pretty happy with that. I'm not gloating or anything like that, but it's just don't tell me what you've sold it for because then I'll automatically just want to sell it for more. Um, I'm naturally competitive like that, I guess, even though I'm not directly competing with anybody. It's just a weird internal thing. Anyway, next, uh, another typewriter. This was a mechanical typewriter, and boy, did I pay up on this one. But the reason I paid up on this one because it was so, so nice. Uh, this was a 1970s model, uh, but it literally looked like it had just come out of the shop today. Uh, there was no yellowing whatsoever to any of this body plastic, which is quite common. Um, the type bars inside there that the actual letters strike the face with, the chrome plate and everything was still on them. They were still bright. They looked like brand new. Um, no discoloration to any of the keys. No damage whatsoever. There wasn't a scratch on it. Uh, it came with its original instructions. It came with its original carry bag. Um, and it was just a nice mechanical typewriter by a good brand, Olivetti. Um, so I was kind of okay with paying 25 quid for it um, because I knew I would still make money. Generally, I don't pay more than 10 to 15 quid on typewriters unless it's something really special. Um, but I just sort of thought, yeah, do you know what? It's nice that I'm having it. So um, 25 I gave for it, sold it for 85.94 altogether, made 15.02 after shipping and fees. And it was a quick seller too. Uh, sold, I think it took maybe about 10 days to sell. Um, so I think for a 70 quid item, that's that's pretty good going, pretty quick. Uh, next one, again, Ted Baker, uh, said about the polo shirt, uh, I think I remember that was that in the previous video, or was that in this one now? I've waffled that much, I can't remember. Um, but Ted Baker's a really good brand to buy, uh, and a really good brand to deal in, because they, everybody wants it, uh, at some point. Ladies like it, men like it, um, their clothing's, their clothing's popular, their shoes, their accessories, their perfumes, their cosmetics, everything. So Ted Baker, great brand to look out for. This was a little gift set that Joe had been bought for Christmas one year. I think I might have even bought it for her, to be honest with you. I can't remember now. Um, but it just had five little uh, travel size bottles of uh, five different Ted Baker scents in there. Um, we had it up at 19.99. This was on a sale as well. I think we also did a cosmetics and beauty sale um, at the same time as we did the toys and games. So we had two different sales running, and um, this was up at nineteen ninety nine. Sold for seventeen ninety nine with free postage. So after shipping and fees, we made seven eighty one. Next, another typewriter, bit different. This one, this was a kids one. Um, this was I rem I actually remember these from growing up, and this was this was uh, a nineteen eighty five model. So this is only a year younger than me, and. Uh, it was a kid's toy typewriter, but again, it was in really good nick and everything worked on it. The only downside with this one, which again, I mentioned specifically in the listing description, um, was that the ribbon, the ink ribbon was running really low and uh, I couldn't find a source for another one. I, I have since seen them on eBay, to be honest with you, and I, I could have probably, you know, if I'd, have, if I'd have left it a little bit longer, I could have probably bought a ribbon and bundled it up with one. But um, 
the buyer was more than happy to just just buy it as it was uh it was boxed and everything as well it was boxed it had its instructions so it was complete uh there is a bit of yellow into the plastic on it there i don't know if it picks up that well on camera um but it's certainly quite visible on the photos um so that was mentioned in the listing description as well I, I went over it every side and sort of said you know on this side there are these marks on this side there is this and um just just Again, accurate and honest descriptions and plenty of good photos, and that sold really quickly. Uh, I don't even... I think from purchase to sale was about three days for that item. So that was a really quick seller. Uh, paid three quid for it, sold it for 58 94 and after shipping and fees made 22 89 on that one. Next, uh, this is me getting slightly better at retail arbitrage. Um, I'm I'm still not by any means professional at it, and I would never profess to sort of be able to advise anybody on the best things to buy new from stores. Uh, but this wasn't a bad little shot. These are um, ballpoint pen refills, and they work with a lot of vintage brands of pen. So a lot of the older um, cross pens and um, sort of what are the other big brands of pens, Mont Blanc and things like that. Their ballpoint pens will generally use this type of refill. Uh, so the I thought I knew they'd do okay because again from being in the jewelry trade previously and being around some high end pens, I kind of knew that the genuine Mont Blanc uh, refills and the genuine Waterman refills and things like that they get really expensive, and um, so people will always want a quality aftermarket one. And again, Schneider, as I've said in previous videos, German brands, really nice quality. So um, these I bought a bunch of them for fifty p a throw. Um, this buyer bought two units off me um so he paid a pound total selling total sale price on that one was 1018 and after shipping and fees i made three pound 32 now again it's not an amazing return on a retail arbitrage item but when you consider that i made less than that on a 25 quid uh 30 quid set of meccano um i actually think that's that's a better return i'd rather be selling i'd rather have a drawer full of those at the size that they are than a drawer full of meccanos that sit for a lot longer so that to me is an improvement in my retail arbitrage selling because it's something that sold a lot quicker it was a lot easier to deal with uh next graphing calculator shout out to resale rabbit john you put me on to selling calculators man and i've never looked back um i'll always pick up a graphing calculator now if it's at the right money this was the first texas instruments one that i've sold uh sold the day after it was listed uh, paid a fiver for it, sold it for thirty three ninety four, and made twelve seventy four after shipping and fees. Uh, had the original manual with it, this one as well. So normally um, you can get away with most calculators going for a large letter, um, but this manual was huge. It was like a phone book, so uh, that one had to go for um, small parcel rate. Next item, I think it's actually the last item, this one, guys. So this was a uh, Columbia showerproof jacket. Uh, I've said in previous videos about being quite into selling outdoor wear and stuff like that because it was another thing that I know from previous jobs and from my own personal passions is outdoor gear. So I'll always sell quality outdoor stuff as well. Uh, paid four ninety nine for this one, sold it for twenty five fifty four on a sale. Uh, we did have a clothing, uh, no, it wasn't clothing, it was coats. It was just specifically coats. Uh, we ran as well for a little bit there in April. I think we did that for about a week. We ran a coat sale, so that was uh, sold in that, and that went for twenty two forty nine um, with two ninety five postage and total after shipping and fees on that one was eight fifty five. So that's all the items, guys. Um, I'm just going to give you a quick rundown of what else has been going on eBay wise. This is my promoted listings. So as you know, I promote all of my listings on eBay um, without exception. I promote at the lowest rate I possibly can um, to still remain competitive. And uh, so far, well, I say so far, it kind of only gave me the last 30 days as an option. So from the 4th of April to the 4th of May is what this is. Um, ignoring all of this about how many listings it's promoted and etc 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 it's basically made me 32 sales between the foot in that month 32 sales have come through advertising the amount i've spent on the advertising uh was 13 pounds 98 and the amount of sales that's generated was 936.39 so again guys promote your listings if you're using ebay on any sort of level um if you're a business seller or a shop uh, subscriber i think you can set your own levels on the uh 
promotion rate. I think if you're a private seller, you have to go with the trending rate. So do keep an eye on those because some of the trending rates on certain items are very high. And if you can't change them, it might be prohibitive to start uh, promoting your listings cost wise. So certainly if you're a business seller or if you're a shop subscriber, um, get promoting your listings because look at that 14 quid for 940 quid worth of sales basically. It's a no-brainer, isn't it? So let's just do the quick totals for April. Again, got to bear in mind with these totals that I have been paying back the PayPal working capital. So it's hit profits quite heavily. Um, certainly another big thing that it's done is I had a couple of items returned this month. So when you've sold an item on the PayPal uh working capital payment you sell that item um, your ebay fees come off your paypal fees come off and your paypal working capital fees come off when that item if an item then gets returned ebay will refund the ebay fees and paypal will refund the paypal fees but you don't get the paypal working capital payment back so if you get a, a, a return on an item that's that's been sort of quite a heavy uh quite a heavy hitting item and it was sold with your paypal working capital payment on there that item is going to run at a loss uh, or that, well, potentially that item is going to run at a loss, but it's certainly going to have another cost factored against it versus because of the fees and you don't get those back. So that's worth bearing in mind if you do plan to use that as well. But yeah, totals, uh, total cost of the items that you've seen across all three videos for April. So uh, if you don't know, I did a video for the first 10 days in April sales roundup. I did part one of this video and part two. So for all three of those videos, um, 222.55 was the total price of the stock. The total value of sales in those three videos, that's before shipping and fees, so that's basically what the 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 cost of the items were up at. Um, no, beg your pardon, no, it's not what I'm talking about. Uh, it's the total, including the shipping and fees that the buyer paid. So that's just everything that physically came into the PayPal account. 172.95, um, and then the total... It's not everything that came into the PayPal account. I've said that totally wrong as well, guys. It's basically everything that we sold on eBay. It came to one seven two nine ninety five. The total profit on that after the shipping and fees was seven oh four twenty six. Total number of units sold was sixty, and that gives us an average customer spend of twenty eight eighty three. Going forward, I want to aim for about thirty five quid average spend. Uh, because I think that's how I'm going to best drive up the, uh, the, the the overall profit is by just kind of having better quality items on there and giving people more stuff to uh, get their teeth into. So that, guys, was everything for that. Oh, look at that. That's me. Ha ha ha. Cheeky. We'll just get that back on there. You don't want to be seeing me. Right. Yeah. So that was everything for today, guys. Thank you so much again for your time. Um, thank you for checking out all the parts of this video. If you haven't checked out the other parts of this video, the link will be down below uh, in the description there. Do, if you enjoyed the video, leave me a like. If you didn't enjoy the video, leave me a dislike. Please leave me a comment either way as to whether you did enjoy the video or whether you didn't. If there's anything I can do differently that make it more enjoyable for you, let me know. I'm learning this too, and I can only learn it from you guys because I'm doing it for you guys. So um, that's everything, guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe uh, if you haven't already, and give the bell a little tickle just so you get notified as to when I'm uploading a new video. But that's everything for today, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Have a great weekend, and take care. Bye-bye.